of school children, teens and parents gathered at the Tennessee Capitol on Thursday to protest for tighter gun control laws. Just three days after a shooter opened fire at a private Christian school in the city, murdering six, including three nine year old children. Now, this rally was organized by 34 year old mother Jen, who asked that only her first name be used. Now, she's been a victim of gun violence herself. Her high school principal in Florida was shot and killed by a disgruntled former teacher. Her cousin murdered his ex fiance with a gun before taking his own life. So gun violence is something that she's experienced personally. And that's why she's protesting the lax gun laws in the state where she lives and where she's raising her family. Now she spoke to the independent and said, honestly, this is my first rally. I've never done this stuff before, she said, holding a poster that featured a family Christmas photo from Republican representative Andy Ogles that shows his family holding weapons. Our society does have a moral issue. She wrote alongside the photo of the politician who represents the district where former student Audrey Hale killed six at the Covenant School on Monday. I felt compelled because I'm a mom and I've dealt with gun violence directly, she said, adding that the rash of school shootings is a disgrace. Jen said that she is not against people having guns. Do what you want with your hunting rifle or whatever. There's no reason why we should have ARs, absolutely zero reason, referring to the AR-15 assault rifles. Now, to most people, that seems perfectly reasonable. To the lawmakers in Tennessee, however, They remained unmoved and stuck to their agenda. The New Republic reported that when Democratic Representative Justin Pearson tried to bring up gun reform while discussing an unrelated bill, Republican Speaker Cameron Sexton told him to keep to the measure at hand. Now Republicans hold a supermajority in the Tennessee legislature as well as holding the governor's office. But all of this is coming as firearms overtook Uh, overtook motor vehicle deaths as the number one cause of death for children and teens in the United States. So these parents, these children, these teenagers, they're protesting for such a worthy cause just to be ignored by these legislators. And Cenk, this just seems like a story that we've seen over and over and over again. Yeah, so number one, I love the protest. And so God bless, do it again and again, make it larger and larger and larger. Okay, now, But also number two, this is very important. You have to have a specific goal that you're trying to accomplish. So in the case of gun control, look, I I don't say to discourage you. I'm just trying to say there's a better way of doing it, okay? It's not as a criticism of this particular protest or anyone involved in it. It's just to say that If you do general protests, even if there's 200,000 people there, it is not going to move a single vote. Because our politicians are now completely disconnected from their voters. They're in little gerrymandered pockets and and they get so much money from outside forces that when uh, elections happen, they just lie to you. They just do ad after ad telling you how great they are and how they're on your side and they care about your kids, etc. And people mistakenly think, oh, that, I guess that's the person on my side and vote for them. So it's not gonna move any politicians. But what if you had a specific goal and you said, okay, for example, this Andy Ogles guy, this is the district where the shooting just happened at the, at the a Christian school, right? Three little kids dead, those poor administrators are dead, one's a janitor, one's a the substitute teacher, the other one's the head of the school. Okay, so look at these kids, look at these grown ups, they're dead, they're in his district. And then show his Christmas card where he's holding up the automatic weapons. And, and honest, let's be honest, put automatic weapons, assault weapons, I should say, in the hands of his little children, right? So here, take this as a political prop. I'm gonna endanger your lives by giving you all assault weapons so I can get elected and get a couple more votes. You defeat Andy Ogles in that race. He won by four. I checked. He won by fourteen. It's not going to be easy. It was a gerrymandered district because yeah. that used to be Jim Cooper's district, and we just gerrymandered out of it. So that's you know what yeah. what, what did it. So it won't be easy. But my guess is whoever whichever Democrat ran against him was not useful, right? Like I'm sure she barely fought. She was told by her consultants, "Be meek and don't have, don't actually run against them," right? And she lost by fourteen. Uh, so. But that's a good thing in a sense because if you defeat someone in Tennessee who won by 14 earlier because he's too extreme 
on guns and you win it on the protect our kids campaign, well, that's gonna send a message. Then all of a sudden, the Lauren Boberts and everybody else who's got the same Christmas picture is gonna be a little nervous. And that's exactly what you want in politics. That's how you play hardball and get them to change their positions. Because remember, they're not actual normal human beings. There's only one thing they care about, power. If you challenge their power, you can get results. If you don't, you're not gonna get results. And that's where we've been the last 40 years. Right, the problem is these gerrymandered districts. So, I mean, you see, so you have like somebody like Andrew Clyde, who was the one that was passing out all the lapel pins in the shape of AR-15s. Um, he he had the same type of uh, of literature. He he associates himself obviously with the guns, and these these people can do whatever they want in these districts because they are gerrymandered to a point where there are about ten competitive congressional districts in the country. So it has to happen in a different way, and it has to also, I think, uh, happen in in electing a Senate that's so imbalanced. That that you can you can do these things uh, and you can push them through. I don't think you know. I love your optimism, but but beating a Republican in a newly cut district in Nashville, who won by 14 points, is no easy task. Um, and and it, it's uh, it's it's a shame that it isn't. Justin Pearson, who was just elected to the House, the State House in Tennessee, who's someone Jenk, you will, who will come on your radar eventually, will likely be the next congressman from Memphis when that happens, uh, an impressive person. These kind of, he's a grassroots guy who, who blocked a pipeline in Memphis. I did that story, T completely upended a big by Helia pipeline that was backed by two big oil companies. And through grassroots action was able to do that. I think grassroots action is gonna to have to be a part of this as well. And I know you say that it's 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 running uphill, but that, that so so too is beating a 14 uh, point margin in a, yeah. in a race. But bottom line is guys, however you do it, you have to take at least one of them out of power and you have to do it on this issue. Like for example, if you did it to Lauren Boebert, who has the same exact Christmas card, it wouldn't really count because Boebert might have lost for any number of right. reasons and she was already in a super close race. So if you find a district where someone's only up by four or right, five right. Republican, but they have the same kind of attitude and the same kind of school shooting in their district, by all means, and by the way, there's so many school shootings, unfortunately, you might be able to find a couple of more, right? But you've gotta take someone out politically, not we don't do right wing nonsense, politically, and then you're gonna have uh, action. Otherwise, you'll never get any action, in my opinion. I keep hearing this sort of idea that because these, you know, inactions or when pieces of legislation like the Don't Say Gay bill uh, or the Stop Woke Act or you know whatever other BS they're pushing through in Florida are being passed at the state level. There's this sort of narrative around it that it's because it's popular with the voters, which I think you know is sort of undermined when we see protests like this happening in these these districts and in these states, um, and their ability to do this is because they control the legislator. It doesn't necessarily mean that even the people who are voting for these you know, uh, Republican state reps or state senators or even the governor you know, wholeheartedly support the things they're passing. Um, they're able to do it efficiently just because they have you know, such a stranglehold on their legislators. And if they have the governorship as well, then that's just the icing on top of the cake. Um, but yeah, so I just sort of want to point out, especially with the story, that people who live in these places are upset about the things that are happening and they're protesting. So sort of casting this, you know, all of these pieces of legislation passing in these these states or the, you know, representatives refusing to take action as being representative of the people that they are supposed to be representing, it's it's just not true. Yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned that, right? So last thing on this is, look guys, unfortunately, media oftentimes misrepresents this just in the same way that Rayvon is talking about there. The reality is if you look at the polling, one of the highest numbers we've ever had, 57% of Americans say generically, we need more gun control. Now, when you say we need more gun control generically, usually people are in America have disfavored that because they're like, well, generically, I don't know if I want more gun control, right? Uh, now people are saying, no, I do know, I want it. Yeah, I definitely want it. And then when you get into the specifics, uh, universal background checks pulls it over 90%. Over 80% of Republicans want it, okay? Red flag laws, a poll in the 80s, over 70% yeah. of Republicans want it. Uh, and then on uh, assault weapons, I've seen polls between 50 and 67 percent. There was a recent Pew poll at 60 percent. 60 percent of Americans wanting it, 
If you're gonna run a political campaign on that issue, it's gotta be good enough. Yeah. 90%, 80%, these numbers have to be good enough that number one, the media shouldn't misrepresent it. The American people actually do want gun control. They don't want every kind of gun control. We can get into more of the specifics later. Like if you said, take away all guns, that would not be popular in America, right? But the three that are super obvious that I just told you, yes, Americans definitely, definitely want that. And so, but also a note to Democratic politicians, run on the issue. Why do you not run on an issue where over 90% of the electorate and over 80% of even Republicans are on your side? You should be banging the drums on universal background check and red flag laws at a bare minimum. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, so really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.